So finally, a developer has given us a 3D print slicer right here on the iPad. So now you can take your models directly from programs like Nomad or from Forger, and you can slice them up on the iPad and prepare them for print and then spit out a file that'll go straight to your printer. So let's take a look at Pick a Slice on the iPad. So head over to the App Store and let's have a look for Picker Slice, P-I-C-A, sorry, P-I-K-A-S-L-I-C-E, Picker Slice, and there you go. Um, we were lucky enough to be involved in the beta, so that there are models um, that are used there, so I'm quite proud about that. Um, and then just uh, download it from there. So uh, when you've downloaded it, just open it, and the default screen that you get shows a printer of some kind. So if you come down here to the bottom left and you can just pick the printer that you want. So make sure you're on printer. And then I've added uh, the one that we're using, which is a Piopoli Phenom. But if you just go here and add, you can add an Anycubic, an Elegoo, Epax, Piopoli, Frozen, Custom. So there's quite a few options straight away, um, even, even though this is a fairly new release. So in mind, the one that I use, the Piopoli Phenom, um, that was obviously that all of the machines that I've got are all supported by this already. So just add that and make sure you're on it. So that's quite a big build volume, um, as, as those of you that know, the Piopoli Phenom. Are, it's like a 400 high machine so it's quite it's quite a big build plate then we want to just add a model so we'll just go add a mesh and we'll just choose a something like this skull that's come comes out of um, nomad so in it comes now if you're coming from nomad sculpt on the iPad and you haven't changed any settings you're gonna get this sort of thing which is it's a really really small size because the the, the scaling on um, Nomad, or the way Nomad works, um, it, it's going to give you this this real dis, you know disparity compared to 3D printer software. But it's not going to be a problem um, because all you can do is just scale it up. You can do it numerically or you can just do it like I'm doing here. Now, you might notice there it's below the floor, but there's a button here. It's not actually named yet, but if you hit that, it'll just drop it onto the floor. And then I'm using, um, you can scale it proportionally with the middle, but I find that slower. So I just drag up to the size that I want and I'm watching the numbers down here at the bottom just to make sure it's the, you know, it's getting to the size that I want. Obviously just tap it in whatever number you, you see fit for your machine or better still just scale it right in the first place before you, before you do that. So let's just move it up on the build plate. You can see there it's still a bit tiny that probably for, for what we want to do. Um, so we'll just scale it up a little bit more and just pop it, leave it, we'll leave it right there in the middle of the build plate. We won't fill the build plate. So just move that toolbox down a bit there. So it's on the build plate, uh, probably want it a little bit higher than that. So what we'll do is we'll move it up and then rotate it as you would do in all the other slices that you may be use, used to. So Chitterbox and, and um, Lychee Slicer, it's very, very similar in that way. And there we have it, it's already in. This is in two parts. So if you come to um, support here, this is where you'll see all of the different things that you can use to affect it. So for example, we could separate shells and that would give us the two parts separately. Um, and what we wanna do next really, and what I would normally do in a scenario like this is to hollow it. So we find hollow and you just hit hollow and that calculates it and it does it quite quickly and it hollows it out. But you can't see the hollowing. So just a little tip for you, um, even if you drag this slicer down, you can see the slicing levels there, um, it doesn't show you that it's hollowed. And that confused me for a little while until I was told you just tap that arrow there and then it shows you the slicing. And this was set at the default of two mil. So that's giving you a slice all the way through of two mil. It takes a minute when, when you're doing it like this, it gives it this, this blocky kind of, I don't know whether it's anti-alias effect, but I suppose it's quicker like that. And then it converts to what you're actually seeing on that slice, which I quite like if, if I'm honest with you. So bear in mind you're on a, a mobile device here. So, you know, wherever they can save, uh, the developer can save a, you know, a little bit of the system resources, um, all the better really. So once it's hollow, 
I usually add a drain hole or two drain holes. So we're going to make it like a four mil drain hole and I'm going to add a couple underneath. Now you see there, accidentally I touched over here and I put a, a support on. And if you do that, hit delete and it just gets rid of it like that. So if I want to add a hole underneath, so don't go under the floor for this. That, that's, that needs to change in the future, but at the moment it can cause a problem. So add a hole, tap it on the surface. That's one done. And I'd like to put one somewhere at the back as well. So add a hole, pop it on the... Oh, I've done it again. I've, had to, I've done what I just said don't do. So just managed to give myself a, another support. Now I want to add a hole and pop it in there. Now, what you probably want to do with those two holes is just drag the slider down. And let's have a look at... Um, in fact, we don't want a third hole, do we? So remove that one. So let's move it down like so. And then make sure that you can see that those holes are protruding all the way through. And if they're not, tap on them and just lengthen them a little bit like that, especially this one here at the front. So lengthen that. And that means it'll definitely cut through um, as, a, as a drain hole. They don't show the holes um, in, the, in, the, the, uh, in the slicer itself. So now you've got that done the next thing to do is to add some support so i'm the laziest 3d print person you'll ever find and um, so i'll be going for auto supports and if you look in your toolbox here you can have small or light as we probably call it medium and heavy so if we just go with medium and we'll just pop them everywhere so we just literally select the skull we're on medium and hit auto support. Now, there's tons more in there for you to explore. I'm just giving you a quick five minute overview here, but there's plenty more options. You know, you can add large ones to, you know, if you want more support, you can go in and add your, your additional large ones. And again, I don't profess to be an expert at this because I'm very much about getting my prints. I don't actually want anything that gets in my way when I'm doing this, this kind of thing. I just basically want it to work and have as little surface damage of where the supports meet the model so generally what i do is i just go auto support with light everywhere and then i add five or six heavies wherever i i see fit and that is it you've pretty much done it already so um when you export it slices so you don't have to pre pre-slice it before you go so you've got some other settings here so you can save the scene and you can export it as an stl before you export it uh, down here, there's something really, really useful, which is um, if you look in the printer settings here and you switch to resin, you can actually change the settings for your resin, which is useful, but you can also do this, which is export it, and then you can send it wherever you need, and that gives you a QR code. So that means that you can post that QR code and give people your settings straight away, which I found really quite useful. So you can change it to the resin that you use. That, that's obviously a, a, a benefit for, for, for people who, who, who you know, use very specific resins. I generally use the Piopoli uh, Deft resin or um, Saria Tech resin, which are very, very similar settings, I, I find. So they're not usually causing me any problems. And then to get it to a file that will be read by your machine, you want I, I want a CBT. Um, so I basically go export. And this is where you'll come across the question that everybody's about to ask me, which is how much is this um, to cost? So if you slice it to memory, there's no cost. And then that, that just gives you a, a sliced version that you can then go and analyze. Um, but if you've if you've got the version and you haven't paid for it, then then you know that that's not going to be very useful. This is useful, obviously, because this is your slice view again and all of all of your um, specific data there, and, and, and it's all from this settings button. Um, but what you want to know is how much does it cost. So if you come to this point and you go slice to file, then if you haven't paid for it, then you 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 obviously. Um, we'll get a dialogue there and that dialogue um basically gives you two options so it's a yearly fee or monthly and monthly i'm paying 3.99 which for me is more than adequate it's more than cheap there's lots of debates about pricing and i'd love to hear what you think about pricing bearing in mind that these developers have to make a living it's all you know it's all very well expecting things to be free but when you're a one-man developer or one woman developer it's very very difficult to make a living if you don't use adverts and i appreciate that there's no adverts in anything like this so you know heads up for that and you know maybe an option in there for maybe one-off prints if you just want to pay a you know, like a one dollar or two dollars for for a print that might be a, a better way for hobbyists 
Um, but for someone like me who does it professionally, then obviously, like, you know, a few quid a month is, is absolutely nothing. And I think it's more than fair to support the developer. And you can pay that for a full year up, 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 up front as well. And that comes out there as a CTB. So that, that that's basically a, a chitterbox file there. So you can you can basically um, just send that directly to your printer, which I've done right now. So that's about it for my quick overview. Um, it, basically, it works. Uh, you know, I've been on it in, in beta, so I've I've had some you know some input on on the things that I I think. But obviously, it's very very new. Um, I'd advise you to get it, try it for a month, and just see if it works for you. And the big big benefit of this is, um, if you've got an iPad and you don't own a PC or a Mac then basically this slicer is for you because it means you can do all of your own slicing and you know preparing for 3D print without having to go to another machine. So it could be the, the, the slicer that you've actually been waiting for. I hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are, please give us a thumbs up because it does help us get in front of other people who might like this kind of content. Don't forget that all our courses are going half price for this weekend only and that's for the 4th of July celebration over there in America. And if you're liking the videos, then please give us a subscribe and join us. We've just hit 30,000 subscribers, which is an amazing achievement and I can't thank you enough for those of you that have subscribed. And if you haven't, then please hit that subscribe button and join in with the fun. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this slicer. Have a go at it and make sure it works for you. And then give the developer some feedback in our comments. I hope everybody has a really good week.